Steve Eisman did exactly what he told you he would do from his first press conference. You can't just keep being bad and picking high. That's not how this works. Some spend on players' depth that would allow you to compete over an 82-game season. I know Steve has a vision. He's the only proven GM in town. What we saw was vintage Steve Eisman. Steve Eisman spoke yesterday and really dropped a lot of uh, I don't want to say gems, but he, he dropped a lot of what you can expect, and he said six to seven new faces in the starting uh, on the starting team compared to last year. You look at the four lines, uh, they are going to drastically change maybe outside of the first line. Andrew Kopp, the Andrew Kopp signing, you know, uh, we'll get to Andrew Kopp in a little bit, uh, but before I do, could you play the video of Steve Eisenman? Uh, talking about Andrew Kopp and what it means for the team moving forward. You know, there was a, uh, a small group of centermen um, that were free agents this year uh, th that we had some interest in. What what we like about Andrew um, is, you know, he, could, he one, he is a centerman. He's 28 years of age. Um, uh, he's a very good athlete. Uh, he's very versatile. If you watched him this year with Winnipeg, you watched him when he went to the Rangers. He's playing center. He's playing the wing. He can he can play on the power play. We watch him for, uh, against us here in Detroit, playing in the bumper in the middle on the power play. Plays on the penalty kill. He's a good faceoff man. So he's very versatile. Um, and at the age of 28, I'm comfortable offering a player a five-year contract. We think he's a good athlete. We know he's a good athlete. We we believe he takes real good care of himself. He's very professional. So. At the age of 28, giving a guy a five-year contract um, I wasn't a concern for him. All right, Andrew Kopp signing, I, I think, is it's a game-changer for Detroit. Now, can they make a push for the playoffs? We'll get to that at 8.30. Uh, I do just want to focus on what Steve Eisenman has taught all of us. You deal with Jeff Blaschel for years, right? Complaining about Blaschel, team's not improving enough. Of course, winning, <laughs> I, I love... I love the conversations we have sometimes in this town. And I'm sure it happens in every town, but I mean, Detroit is a historic sports town. And the Wings are not a team that, you know, really post-Dead Wings era, they were one of the best, if not the featured franchise uh, of the NHL. Uh, they had the longest playoff streak in NHL history, obviously. And then, of course, a few tough years. Here we are. Steve Eisenman comes into town. Time to rebuild the thing. Here we go. His first draft pick is now the Calder Trophy winner. And the trend I'm going to see, and that I hope you've all seen, is that Steve Eisenman isn't a GM, isn't an individual, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, everyone isn't the person that comes up to you or comes across to you as hey we need time give me a few years and uh you know we'll turn it around and then a few years go by because let's be honest you need time right you have to be fair to some people sometimes you do have to go into a rebuild fine and then you give them time and they say well we need a little more time and that is not the case with Steve Eisenman he is gone about his business exactly how he said from the first day from his first pe press conference to we need time it's gonna suck for a little bit we're gonna build this team we're gonna build it through the draft and when the time is right we're gonna make signings boy didn't that all come to fruition over the last few days didn't that come to fruition over the last few days Steve Eisenman did exactly what he told you he would do from his first press conference. And I think what I found most impressive is the timing. Timing matters so much in all of professional sports. I'll go to the NFL as an example. The timing, the timing on Tampa Bay having a pretty talented offense allowed them the opportunity to snag Tom Brady in free agency. You want to go to timing, let's say, in basketball. Timing the Warriors. They needed a few years to get right, get healthy. It allowed them to deal a few players, bring in an Andrew Wiggins, a Jordan Poole, send him to the G League, get him up for the season, get him ready. And now you have a championship team. Timing, precise moves, it matters in football. 
It matters in hockey, baseball. It matters in every sport. And with the Detroit Red Wings, what I love most is it went from Jeff Blasio will not return as our head coach. Fine. Cool. I think we're all, we all were on board with it. No knock against you, Jeff. Congratulations, by the way, Jeff Blasio on his assistant coaching role in Tampa Bay. But that was the necessary move. And it was the necessary move not because I wanted it or you wanted it. It was necessary because eventually you can't just keep being bad and picking high. And Steve Eisenman recognizes this. You can't build a culture of winning picking in the top three, top five, top seven every year. That's not how this works. Especially hockey. You don't turn your team around suddenly. How long did it take Connor McDavid to make the playoffs with Edmonton? Hockey is a different sport. You can't just draft your version of LeBron James and everything comes together. So the Wings have been drafting and drafting over the last three years. Now the fourth draft Steve Eisman has held. And finally, finally you saw him spend. You saw him spend not on luxury big signings. You saw him spend on players depth that would allow you to compete over an 82 game season. Because injuries do happen. But guys, what we saw was vintage Steve Eisman. And you know what? Buffalo is a great example, Dabber. You draft Eichel all those years ago, and then you you got to move on from him. And you keep drafting and drafting, and you have these players, but you keep sucking. A GM with a plan is such, is such an asset. A GM with a vision, right? I like to believe Brad Holmes has a vision. I know... And I only know because Steve has proven it before. I know Steve has a vision, right? He did it in Tampa Bay. He's the only proven GM in town. Troy Weaver, I like to believe, has a vision. And we've seen it come to fruition over the last two years. Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, the development of Sadiq Bey, identifying Isaiah Stewart as a potential fit in the modern NBA for his role. Undersized guy. Like There have been mo- Jer- trading Jeremy Grant for what he did. And then flipping it around for what he did. At the, again, a GM with a vision. I, I like to believe Brad Holmes has one. We've seen what he's done in the draft. The moves he's been able to make to trade up in the draft, especially in the first round. That was ridiculous. Cool. GM's with a plan. I'm not going to acknowledge the Tigers. We're not going to do that this morning. So when you have a guy in charge that has a vision, that you may not see all the time. And that's what being a leader is, by the way. Being a leader is making decisions where maybe in the next two, three, four weeks, six weeks, people are like, man, really questioning this guy's decisions. How, how could he make these decisions? And then six months, eight months later, everybody falls in line. Like, oh, you know what? Actually, that was the right, that was the right decision. And maybe it wasn't the right decision the first few weeks. Uh, you know what? Six months later is probably the right move. That's what being a leader is. And you absolutely have a leader in Steve Eiserman. He's done a hell of a job so far. This is just the beginning. He says also that he's not expecting to make any splash trades, any mega signings. It's They're basically done. Uh, I think it's going to be a quiet offseason. We're going to spend time with development camps, see how the kids do, uh, see how they perform. And will this team be a playoff contender? I'll get to that at 830 at I would be, again, I would be shocked if Steve Eiserman didn't do all of this. How do you hire your guy and send him out there with a team that you sent out last year? Just call it what it is. It was a plug-and-play offense. The power play was a disaster. Well, probably one of the worst defensive pairings in all of the league across the board outside of having Mo Sider. So it wasn't good. It just wasn't. And you can't give up the second most goals again like you did last year. So this is a team that's that's going to be, I think, in the running for a playoff spot. But we'll get into we'll get into detail in just a few minutes.